I retested a Berkey to compare it with our initial test that detected an activated alumina leaching problem. I bought a brand new set of PF2 fluoride filters from an official Berkey distributor, and this time ran 100 gallons of water through the system before testing. Curious if the filters caused the same issue? Stay tuned to find out. In our first Berkey test, the lab identified high levels of aluminum being leached by the PF2 fluoride filters. And if you haven't seen that video yet, you can check it out here. A few Berkey distributors were quick to reply in the comments, reiterating that this detection was actually the compound aluminum oxide, aka activated alumina, the media used for fluoride and arsenic reduction. As it was only a single test, I couldn't determine if the PF2 filters we used were faulty or if the issue applied to all Berkey PF2 filters. So I wanted to test again to get a bit more data. I purchased a brand new set of PF2 filters from Berkey Filters, one of the largest New Millennium Concepts Berkey distributors. Once again, I followed the priming and installation instructions, making sure not to screw the filters on more than eight rotations. And this time, I ran more than 100 gallons of water through the filters before conducting the tests. As one Berkey distributor distributor commented, alumina washout from the PF2 filters is always high during the first use, which is why folks see a cloudy dust washout in the sink when priming the filters. In our initial test, I assumed 50 gallons would have been enough given that the manual suggests it should stop after just 10 batches of water. I wanted to make sure that the normal filter washout was not a contributing factor to elevated levels of activated alumina in the filtered water. Now, before I jump into the data, do me a favor, like this video and let me know down in the comments if you enjoy watching videos about water filters put to the test like this. Also, make sure you subscribe so you get notified when we upload another video. We'll look at the data using the health guideline level benchmark, which prioritizes human health and is much more strict than the federal MCL. The activated alumina detection increased slightly, but nowhere near as much as in our initial test. It increased from just 0.052 to 0.069 milligrams per liter, a 32% increase, but still well below the health guideline level benchmark of 0.6 milligrams per liter. And this time, the PF2 filters completely eliminated the fluoride. As for the other contaminants, the Black Berkey filters once again performed exceptionally well in dealing with barium, chloroform, copper, lead, manganese, and total THMs, which were all 100% removed. And interestingly, calcium increased by 293%, chloride by 26%, magnesium by 351%, strontium by 122%, sulfate by 130%, and potassium appeared where it was absent in the prefiltration test. Fortunately, none of these exceed the health guideline level, and in fact, a few of them don't actually pose any threat to human health. So we actually tested four stainless steel gravity-fed systems at the same time with the same water sample. And in all four tests, there was a similar increase in these substances. The first 100 gallons of water used to prepare the filters actually contained higher levels of several of these ions, which were then later present in the filtered water. And after discussing this with the lab's chemists, we determined that this phenomenon is most likely temporary and we did not suspect any issue with the filters. But of course, more testing would be necessary to verify this hypothesis. Although there was still a slight increase of aluminum detection post-filtration, the amount was well below the health guideline level. Because there wasn't such a dramatic increase like we saw in our first test, this could mean a couple of things. First, the PF2 filters used in our initial test might have been faulty. Second, despite adhering to the installation guidelines, it's possible that we inadvertently over-tightened the filters, which could have resulted in internal damage in the unintended release of aluminum oxide media. So if this were the case, this is a bit of a design flaw because it leaves too much room for user error by over-tightening the filters. However, I was happy to see that the fluoride was 100% removed in this second test. If you want to check out the data from all of our tests or get your own water tested with TAPSCORE, there are links in the description. And if you enjoy watching videos where water filters are put to the test, don't go anywhere because we got another one coming up for you right now. Click or tap the screen to keep watching.